It's Oscar season now, and there is one film that hasn't been on anyone's mind. A film about art, about belief. A film which makes justice and belief come together in unison to create a sense of drama and tension within the eyes of its viewers. This film is Bandysnatch. I would say this was the most important piece of media that our generation has been able to produce. But why was it snubbed? My name is Michael, and this is projected on the screen behind the screen. Okay then, let's talk about Black Mirror, designed and curated by the genius who is Charlie Brooker. Now, Charlie Brooker isn't your average television showrunner. In fact, he isn't even your average human. As a young child, he grew up on an Austrian farm in a place called Death Valley. He didn't have electricity until he was 12. And then, after he got his first light bulb, he began having terrible nightmares about half-robot, half-man and half-rat creatures tormenting him and his family in a future life. These dreams continued to haunt him until he developed schizophrenia. He later put his experience into words in his first published novella, entitled Escape from Skittering Hate. This is an extract from that novella. I didn't know where I was headed at the time. Death Valley was a ghost town, and all I could see in front of me was a series of paths. One led to rats, the other led to my own dark reflection staring at me, and the other to my deceased mother Gertrude. This is Charlie Brooker's inspiration for Bandysnatch. To call Bandysnatch a choose-your-own-path Netflix special would be a lie, because that's not what it is at all. What Bandysnatch is, is a statement. But what is Bandysnatch's statement on? Women. Now, let's dissect the title, Bandy Snatch. Now what does the word bandy make you think of? That's right, the 1985 game Crash Bandicoot for Sega Saturn. This reference is here because Charlie Brooker used to work as a video game critic, and has famously quoted it as being his favorite game, saying in a 2009 GQ magazine interview, I like Crash, it's fun breaking boxes and he is so goofy, but what if Crash was a woman? What if Crash had tits and a vagina? I want to know. Brooker's dream would come true exactly 14 years later when he based the counselor character on his favorite video game character, Crash Bandicoot. This can be seen in the Bandysnatch scene in which the counselor can clearly be seen mouthing the words, wow, a famous quote from the game and a clear statement on who her character really is. In one of the secret bonus scenes, she even eats a wampa fruit and hits a box with her fist. It's a shame I didn't screen capture it at the time, but my narrative choices have become so complex that I was unable to recreate them. Now let's look at the second part of the title, Snatch. Why is this here? That's right, the 2001 movie Snatch with Brad Pitt, a film which revolves around a diamond heist gone wrong, something our tormented protagonist himself goes through in his own mind, as he tries to steal back his innocence which he lost when his mother was hit by a train. So. We've only discussed the title, and already we've seen direct, undeniable references to movies, video games, and transgender politics. Now let's talk about the bigger picture. The bigger picture being economics. Communism versus capitalism. In 1970s, Charlie Brooker's father, Book Brooker, served in the Vietnam War. He was kidnapped and taken to a friendly POW camp, where he met none other than a young Karl Marx. The two got talking and quickly became friends. It was here that he made the transition, and by that I mean he became a woman. This was the catalyst for Charlie Brooker's communist stance, which he would communicate time and time again throughout his writings, speeches and paintings. His strong criticism of capitalism is communicated in his famous Black Mirror episode, 15 Million Merits, where he shows how capitalism turns young, delicate, innocent flower girls into sex-crazed porn stars and turns vulnerable African-American athletes suicidal. But how do you make a fully communist piece of art? How do you put the means of film production back into the hands of the audience? You make Bandy Snatch, a fully democratic cinematic masterpiece. Everything is pure choice. You choose what to have for breakfast, what music to listen to on the bus, whether to break your computer or pour tea over it. But no matter what happens, the outcome is one and the same, as is Charlie Brooker's intention. This is shown in The Frame. Every time one makes a decision, the frame goes from normal to letterbox. 
What does this say? This represents the belief of communism closing in on our main character. And because we are our main character, what Charlie Brooker has masterfully managed to convey is how communism itself is closing in on us. And this beautiful, communist piece of media could never find its way into the Nazi-controlled fascist construction that is the Oscars. A corporation who would rather give a platform to pedophiles and oil moguls over honest and true filmmakers like Charlie Brooker. I can't think of another filmmaker, alive or dead, who has managed to do this, other than maybe the creators of Spider-Verse, but that's a video for another day. In any case, Boundersnooch is emotive, dramatic, and beautiful, all through infusing postmodern neo-Marxism into cinema. And that is why Bindel Snindel is the most important piece of media of the century. I have been Michael, and you have seen projected on the screen behind the screen. Thank you. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment what you think about Black Mirror, communism, and Bindel Snindel. Yeah, What's the wit? Yeah, that'll do. That's fine.